Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to continue with angular material. I know in the last video we kind of took a little bit of a swerve in the road of videos where I talked about Python, but we're back on track to angular material and we're talking about the select component. So, so far we've talked about when I introduced how to import angular material, we talked about the button real quick. We've talked about the table and what was the last thing? The slider we also talked about. So today we're talking about the fourth thing. Um, in this series. I don't know if we're going to cover everything. Probably not. We're just going to cover some more important things that I think are more important maybe. And that is the select, which is also known as the drop down in a form. And if you like this kind of stuff where we just learn different things in programming together, and as I learn new things, I uh, share them on this channel with you guys. Don't forget to hit subscribe. You guys have been killing it. I uh, really do appreciate it. I'm going to try to make this one a shorter video. There shouldn't be... Thank you, Dell. There shouldn't be a whole lot that we, you know, need to talk about too in depth. Um, and I am planning on making a pretty good Philly cheesesteak. So that might rush some things. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been killing it. Let's look at the prerequisite as always when bringing in a new component. So we're on the component of the select and I will have it linked down in the description so you can follow along. And we're going to look at the API tab. And as usual, if you probably uh, could have guessed by now, if you've been following along, we're going to import that select module into our project. So let's copy this import statement. Let's go to our app module TypeScript, and I'm just going to put it up here at the top with our other import statements. We're going to import it, and then we're going to bootstrap it and throw it into our list or array of imports here, right? Just adding it to the bottom. And now it is part of our project so we can use it. And I cleaned up this HTML right now. I just have a container with some margin and some width styling because I'm going to put the selector in here. And if I don't do this kind of styling, it's going to look a little bit odd. It's going to be in the top left corner. And if I don't put a width, uh, the select is just going to be the width of the page, which we don't want. <laughs> I no longer have the table. And let's go ahead and talk about the data for this select. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an array called dogs and it's just going to be an array of a few dogs. So a beagle, um, whoops, what other dog? Black Lab or Chocolate Lab maybe, if you uh, are more a fan of those. And English Bulldog, probably one of my favorite dogs. And um, let's just go with a poodle, I guess. So we have four dogs and let's say we have a form and we want the user to select which dog they prefer. So we can use the angular material drop down or the select to go ahead and facilitate that. So the tag is mat select. And then each option for the user to choose from is actually called mat option. Very similar to the HTML select in terms of naming convention. So now we have options and what I would want to do is instead of writing out each individual option, like saying uh, blue, let's say it was colors, not dogs, blue. And then we copy this, whoops, we'd copy this and then paste it here and then say like red. I'm going to use that array in the TypeScript that we created with the dogs. And I'm going to use an ng4 directive to loop through all of those options and create a new option for every single one. So ng4, and let dog of dogs, and let's also do some property binding and set the value property of this element uh, equal to dog. So the value of this option is gonna be dog. And what's going to be displayed to the user? We're just going to display dog in our binding syntax here, okay? So let's go ahead and save this, it'll compile, and we'll go look at this. And here's our selector. You can't really tell other than the drop down right here. You might want to change some of the styling of this. And I'll show you one thing you can do here in a second. But let's click on this. And here are all of the different dogs that, uh, that we put in that array. So it's pretty dynamic. So if I added a dog to this array, um, like a Yorkie, I guess, and we save that. You can see we don't have to do anything in the code. Uh, that ng4 directive does it for us and adds that as an option at the end. So something we can do to make this look maybe a little bit better is put the mat select inside of the mat form field tag. 
And since technically this is a element of a form, that adds some automatic styling. So if we save it after putting it inside this map form field, and we go and look at it, it now has this underline, and you can see after we select one, it turns green. I guess that, that means you did it successfully. Okay, so what if we want to bind this to a property in the TypeScript? So I'm going to make another property called selected val, and it's gonna be of type string. And right off the bat, it's just going to be an empty string. What if I wanted to bind that option that I chose and that select to the selected val? So what we can do is we can use two-way data binding, and this is the syntax, and we can say value the value that the user chooses is going to be set to selected val. I guess I called it select val in the TypeScript. So we'll say select val. And we won't know off the bat that this works, but a way to test this is I'm going to put a paragraph tag down here and let's just bind select val to this so we can see it as we choose an option in that select. So if I go back and I select uh, English Bulldog, here's that paragraph tag and you can see now English Bulldog is here and that's because the binding now works. Both are referencing the selected val. So this sets the value of selected val and this one now displays it just for a little validation for ourselves. So those are the basics of the mat select and now you should be able to throw that in if you want the user to select something and uh, be able to use that as a drop down. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. Hope to see you in the next one.